you're on the board of 23andMe? Yeah. Which is sort of this uh, genomic. Direct to consumer genetics. Genetics, right. You, yeah. and, and you're also part of the Personal Genome Project, um, which is. Yeah, I have my entire genome online at uh, pgp.org or personalgenome.org. PGP, not, per, not pretty good privacy, personal no. genome. Personal genome. So 23andMe, it seems, um, well, A, it's still, is it still about 1000 bucks or? No, no, no. It's come down. You should order immediately. It's 99 plus, a, I think, oh, really? $9 a month. Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, so you get, I haven't done it. Mike, Michael did it. Uh, you get, you know, all this you information. You may be related. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get all this information about what, uh, you know, what diseases you might be prone to, right, or what, what you might be looking out for. But then what do you actually do with that data? So do you okay. just then go well, and so here, I mean, get bummed out because you're uh, no, going to get Alzheimer's? No, well, with and... luck, you get motivated. I mean, what normally happens, so first let me just explain a little more what you get and then what happens. You get information about your own genome. You get lots of data, most of which it's like your genome's a Russian novel. Mm -hmm. The part of it that we do at 23andMe is a Russian essay. Uh, but all the world has is about a three or 400 word glossary. So we give you as much of the essay as we can interpret with that 400 word glossary. And it comes in the form of charts and statistics of people with the same genome as you, 20% get you know, atrial fibrillation of the heart, mm -hmm. that's slightly above average or slightly below average. And most things are going to be in the range of from, you know, 0.1 or 2% up to 30 or 40%. It's it's rare for... But what do I do with this what, data so, when, yeah. once I get it? Do I so give it to my doctor or do I... Probably not. Your doctor mm -hmm. will get kind of uneasy and mm -hmm. say, you know, you shouldn't really believe this stuff. It's not a diagnosis. Because mm -hmm. uh, the doctor probably doesn't understand what it means. I mean, there are doctors who do. Ideally, you're probably not going to get anything very surprising. Your, your, your family health history is still a much better indicator of most of these things. Hmm. But if you have a family health history of X, then you can see, well, am, am, did I actually inherit those genes that might make it more likely for me to get X? Most, almost anything you get, number one, it's less likely if you eat right, sleep a lot, mm -hmm. uh, get exercise. Or, you know, whether it's likely or not, you'll get it later in life if you're healthier. Right. And so, ideally, you look at that and you just pay more attention and you start to eat right. But isn't the um, promise of personal genomics that yes, and I'll I'm be able sorry, to get... I'm getting to that. Okay. So, there are a few things like your sensitivity to Coumadin, which mm -hmm. is the blood thinner, right? Uh, where it's really useful to know your genetics because dosing it correctly is hard and. Mm -hmm. If you get too much, you'll start bleeding. If you get too little, you'll get a blood clot. Right. And that's that's one really great use case. Uh, lots of people have found they have celiac disease, and so there's there's a there are a bunch of things it can do for some people that are very useful. But I don't like to oversell it. Mm -hmm. In the long run, which is probably the next two to ten years, the primary benefit is mostly going to be, I believe, in terms of figuring out which drugs are going to be effective. You're right. depressed. Well, you know, should you be taking Xanax or Prozac or, you know, I don't know what. Uh, you're, you know, what kind of cancer do you have? And there's a lot of genetics of the cancers themselves as opposed to of you. Right now, a lot of the value of it is you get to contribute to scientific research. Mm -hmm. And many, I'd say most of our users are benefac beneficiary, benefactors rather than beneficiaries. Uh, but I also think for a lot of people, just it's part of, oh, gee, I should pay more attention to my health. And is it, are, are more, uh, do you see that, that the types of people who, uh, who sign up for it are, you know, sort of the people who started you know, a year or two ago when, when it first became available, right? The people who are just like naturally curious that maybe they're, they're uh, early adopters of this technology and sort of a class of people, right, who yeah. would do it no matter what. And then to, to what extent has that sort of broadened, yeah. I guess? I mean, you know, we obviously don't mm -hmm. ask everybody. We don't know. But there's about 100,000 people in the database now. Oh, really? I was at a, 
a startup meeting yesterday of 20, 20 something startup types, as we were discussing, the ones who can start companies with mm -hmm. no money. And three out of 20 had actually done 23 and Me, hmm. And it wasn't even a health group, it was just right. generic. So that was, that was quite surprising. But yeah, it's still mostly for early adopters. Uh, people don't know that it's no longer a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's getting broader. And I think that's going to continue. It's, and, and you're right. A lot of people say, well, how is it really useful? You know, I have a firm belief that just knowing stuff is useful, which is why I did the space training. 